Here we have a pretty standard setup for the synthesis of cadmium selenide quantum dots. The key components to the synthesis are the cadmium precursor dissolved in our solvent in the flask and the selenium precursor in the syringe. We're operating at a pretty high temperature of about 240 degrees Celsius. To start the reaction, we'll do a hot injection of the selenium precursor into the reaction flask. The precursors combine to form a reservoir of monomers which are the building blocks for the nanocrystal. When the monomer concentration is high enough, reaching the critical concentration, the particles start to nucleate and continue to grow until the monomers are depleted. In this way, the concentration of monomers is a determining factor in the final size of the nanoparticles. The entire synthesis for cadmium selenide is quite rapid. In this setup, it takes about 5 minutes to go to completion or can be stopped earlier to obtain smaller sized nanoparticles. As the reaction progresses, we can see that the color of the solution changes. This is because quantum dots have optical and electronic properties that are dependent on their size. Here we're taking aliquots at different time points in the synthesis so that we can have cadmium selenide quantum dots of different sizes to compare to one another. When we compare the different aliquots, we see that they exhibit colors ranging from yellow to reddish orange. This is because of an important feature of quantum dots where their absorption maxima vary with the size due to the quantum confinement effect. As the reaction progresses and the particle size increases, the absorption feature progresses to higher wavelengths. These absorbance features can be measured by UV-Vis spectroscopy. This peak seen here shows the lowest energy excitonic transition and corresponds to the band gap energy of the semiconductor. Facile characterization of the optical properties is a major advantage because as the reaction progresses, the size of the quantum dots can be estimated by the wavelength of this peak. More accurate size measurements can be done via transmission electron microscopy. These particles are also naturally luminescent, and so their emissive features also vary as a function of size, as you can see here. The smallest particles emit in the blue and the largest in the red. While the synthesis of cadmium selenide quantum dots is very well developed, Cadmium-based materials are avoided in applications for their high toxicity, so there's a big push towards developing less toxic alternatives. Indium phosphide is a less toxic alternative that is being used as a drop-in replacement for cadmium selenide nanomaterials currently in commercial display applications. Here we have a reaction setup for the synthesis of indium phosphide quantum dots, which has a few key differences when compared to that of cadmium selenide. One is that we're operating at a high temperature of about 300 degrees Celsius. Secondly, it is critical that the synthesis is carried out in a rigorously air and water-free conditions. This is because indium phosphide is highly sensitive to oxidation and incorporation of water in the synthesis has been demonstrated to affect the growth of these nanoparticles. Lastly, we're using indium phosphide clusters to be hot injected via the syringe. The reaction flask currently contains a high boiling solvent but no other precursors. The indium phosphide cluster is a single source precursor in this reaction, which means that these clusters have all the reactants required for the formation of the quantum dots built in. The indium phosphide cluster is in fact a stable intermediate that we can isolate from the synthesis of molecular indium and phosphorus precursors at a lower temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. When we do the hot injection, you can see that there is a rapid color change from pale yellow to vivid orange. As the particles grow to larger sizes, the color of the solution evolves to deeper red. This reaction is much slower when compared to the cadmium selenide synthesis and can take up to 40 to 60 minutes to go to completion. The different aliquots are exhibiting colors ranging from yellow to reddish orange due to the differences in absorption wavelength as a function of size. As synthesized, indium phosphide quantum dots are not efficient emitters. However, post-synthetic modifications of the surface of the quantum dots can be performed to not only improve their emissive efficiencies, but also tune the colors in which they emit 
without altering their size. This is a powerful tool to develop less toxic quantum dot materials for emissive applications.